This is Rick Rowe for Rural Investment Media, sponsors and producers of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium, July 7th through 11th in Boca Raton, Florida. Whether you elect to uh, attend in person uh, or participate in the conference from the comfort and convenience of your own home uh, via live stream, please know that we're gonna deliver between 50 and 60 hours of valuable but intense programming in four days, more than you're going to be able to absorb during those four days. To that end, uh, conference recordings will be available for you to replay the information and relearn the material again and again and again, which you'll need to do. But also as a consequence of what I call the tyranny of time, uh, we are interviewing every exhibitor and every speaker before the conference so that you can learn about the conference material before you get to the conference. Allocate your time efficiently and look at investment opportunities over the period of time uh, that you will have available to you. Note too, that uh, at our conference, unlike any other investment conference that I know of, the public company exhibitors have all been vetted by myself. At most other conferences, the prerequisite to be an exhibitor is simply a check that cashes. At our conference, the public company uh, 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 issuers are all owned in my ap accounts or in accounts owned and managed by myself. Yes, that's a conflict of interest, one that we're proud of. Uh, every exhibitor at our conference has been vetted. No guarantee that because I own a stock, it goes up. But there is a guarantee that every exhibitor has been looked at in some detail. To that end, uh, I'm delighted to introduce to you a fairly recent friend of mine, uh, a young woman with a long history in mining, but a short history as the CEO of Empress Royalty. Alexandra, uh, welcome. Thank you for your efforts on behalf of shareholders, particularly, of course, your efforts on my behalf. And thank you, too, uh, for your ongoing support of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium and our boot camps. Thank you so much, Rick. It is great to be here, and it's such a fantastic conference. We're excited to be part of it. Well, let's begin uh, by a little autobiographical sketch of the CEO. Uh, tell us something about your background in mining. Uh, your chairman's background in mining, your staff's background in mining, and why we yeah. should care about how you answer the question. Establish some credibility <laughs> for me. Why should I care what Alexandra says? <laughs> I've been in, in mining since I was 14. Started very, very early on in the industry um, and have grown with the industry. So I uh, started as an analyst or at PwC originally, and then I joined a group called Endeavor Financial as an analyst worked my way up through the ranks to become director of structured finance, uh, worked in over $1.5 billion worth of deals. So, you know, in the, my time in Endeavor Financial, I got to work with some mining greats, uh, some amazing mining entrepreneurs like Neil Whittier, my father, Frank Joostra, Frank Holmes, you know, Clive Johnson, uh, really was mentored by some amazing individuals who've been notorious and amazing in our industry. Um, my partner in this is David Rhodes from Endeavor Financial. He's the managing director there. And we teamed up to launch Empress. What we were seeing is the mining companies, especially the juniors, didn't have access to streaming finance solution. So we set up Empress, uh, streaming companies, the bigger ones were doing $100 million plus. So we set up Empress to serve the junior side of the market, sub 25 million. And we did that about three years ago with the concept um, and we've been layering in investments over the last couple of years. And now we're getting to the point where we're cash flow positive. So it's been an exciting sort of strategy to get to where we're at. So let's revisit in some more detail uh, the part of the market that you inhabit. You're not pretending, at least at present, to compete with the Francos, uh, the Wheatons or the Cisco royalties. Who do you serve? Uh, who are your competition? And what are your advantages over the competition? Why you, as opposed to the other second tier royalty and streaming companies? We are all structured financiers. We've got a lot of experience in mining finance. And, you know, there's many different types and ways of, of investing in the royalty space. There's the expiration prospect generators, um, some amazing economic geologists out there doing some great things. That's earlier stage. Then there's the third party acquisition. So they're buying an existing royalty that's already in place. We're on the creation side. So we work directly with mining companies, bringing them that financing the need to either expand the production or to get into production. And that really is leveraging off our experience, 
our network. Um, we're able to do extensive due diligence and we have that direct relationship. So I've got monthly reporting. I've got, you know, I can go to site anytime we need to. We can really monitor our investments. I'm not waiting for financials to come out, you know, three months after the, the period ends to find out what's happened. We're very engaged with our investments. And that really is, again, using our experience and expertise to find these opportunities and to be able to bring in ones and really focus our capital and our investment dollars into ones that will generate revenue, creating real value. So am I right then? Let me repeat this back to you. And please tell me if I'm wrong, by the way. Uh, am I right? You see your competitive advantages as a consequence of your affiliation with Endeavor, uh, a much more established financial services provider to mining, but also uh, the fact that you aren't buying royalties, but rather creating them. The thing that would differentiate you, as I understand it, uh, is your structure skills and your access to opportunity through Endeavor. Is that accurate? Absolutely. I mean, we're able to keep our company small, um, low GNA. You know, I've only got three full-time people. Uh, I've just hired some new uh, new. VP Corporate Development, who also comes from a structured finance background to really build the pipeline out and to bring some new investments in. And with the relationship with Endeavor, I've got access to all their financial analysts, uh, financial modelers, mining engineers, geologists, to really punch above our weight to not only source and find new opportunities, but be able to execute and deliver on those transactions. So let's talk about your asset base now. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us something about the transactions and the assets that you have uh, tell us about the now. We'll talk about the future later. So we have currently four key investments in our portfolio. We just doubled our revenue this year um, in terms of them coming in. So we have a producing asset in Peru where we're helping them expand the production. Uh, we did it about two years ago. We've received uh, receiving significant revenue from them. They're just getting to that final stages of ramp up now. We have a royalty in Mozambique. Uh, that mine was developed and we invested. It's now production, consistent revenues coming every month from that investment. We have one in Mexico um, called Talaweto by Luca Mining. They're just getting into commercial production now, and that's a silver stream we structured there. So that's going to be very exciting for our revenue as well as having that direct exposure to silver coming into Empress. And then we just recently announced in January, we invested in a gold mine in South Africa. Uh, called Galaxy Mine, and that was one where it was a beautiful plant, and mill operating, and they needed more money to get to the underground, uh, a new face underground, and to buy some new mining equipment. So we've just closed on that in March, and we're now starting to get the revenue coming in from that. So these types of transactions that we're doing, they're you know either production expansion, development just about in production, um, you know really focusing our investment dollars on revenue. So. We've invested $24.5 million to the portfolio to date, um, and that's going to generate about $60 million of revenue over the next five years. Uh, one of the things that uh, impressed me when I became an investor with, with Empress was precisely that of, uh, investment efficiency. Could you refresh my memory as to the net present value created relative to the cash invested historically? Yes. Yeah, so we've done $24.5 million into the company um, now with our new investment, Galaxy. And then the net asset value, that's just over close to $60 million. And so, again, the revenue coming in, if we did nothing else and we just sat back, is about $60 million of revenue over the next five years. And our GNA is just over $2 million or around $2 million. So the idea with this is, and we did a lot of investments in ones that would bring immediate cash so we can redeploy that into the portfolio and keep growing it out with similar opportunities that we're seeing to the ones we've done today. So let's talk about that. Do you have uh, ample access both to cash and cash flow to grow? Uh, and if so, uh, when might we expect uh, some evidence uh, of the continuation of the successful application of capital on shareholders' behalf? Yeah, so we just restructured our debt facility in December. Uh, we've now got a $28.5 million accordion facility with Nabari. And essentially what that means is we can draw down what we want when we need it. We don't have to pay standby fee or anything like that. So we drew down three and a half to pay the existing debt. We drew down five for South Africa for Galaxy. And now we've got $20 million US available to us to deploy into new investments. Um, the goal is to really increase the portfolio. We've got four sources of revenue now. 
I really want to get that diversification happening into the company, having, you know, five, six, seven investments. Um, and part of that, uh, besides having access to the debt facility to do this, is also by bringing in Nora Pincus. So she came from Nabari. She understands their structure quite well. Um, a lawyer by trade. Uh, very well connected in the industry. So her and I have been out hunting for the last couple of months, looking for new opportunities to bring into it. Uh, we're in discussions with several different groups at the moment um, and really hoping to advance some of those quickly. Um, but again, we go through a rigorous due diligence process. We're all big shareholders in this, so they have to be the right investments. Um, but we really are keen to deploy that $20 million um, into the right investments and get more diversification in the portfolio. And if I understood your answer to a prior question, uh, assuming that you were in runoff, uh, you look forward to something like $60 million, $50 million, pardon me, in trailing revenues relative to a million, a million two, a million five in GNA, which would suggest that over five years, in addition to having the debt facility, that you will have ample free cash to reinvest. Am I understanding the arithmetic correctly? Exactly. We will have free cash flow, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of this year to start or even sooner to start reinvesting into the portfolio. We want to keep that balance with debt as well. So those are things we look for. Um, you know, we'd love to get to a point where we've been able to redeploy it back in the portfolio. We have stable revenue from multiple sources and that diversification, which is the direction we're going now, um, you know, again, with double revenue this year um, and then get to a point where we can get to a dividend policy. That's probably too soon now. I see that being more 18 to 24 months. I think if David Rhodes, our chairman, had his way, it'd be 18. But I think we just need to really reinvest in the portfolio, get some more assets in there, and and build it out. Um, again, it's been a it's been a really amazing journey to get to where we are now. We had a concept. We knew that there was a ability to make a lot of money um, in this type of market, especially in the junior side. And then now to have four uh, key investments is great. And I just want to keep growing it and building it out with a really good team. I think one of the interesting things uh, about Empress from my viewpoint, although uh, I'm allegedly a cautious investor now, uh, I acquired the money to invest by being a, a fairly aggressive speculator. Uh, we've described uh, the asset base. We've described the expertise of the people involved. We've, expl we've described the strategy for growth. Uh, tell us what we're paying for this. What's the market capitalization of Empress? So we've got about 120 million shares outstanding. Our market cap is roughly about uh, 30 million US at the moment. Um, so if you look at how we compare to our peers, um, you know, deeply, dis uh, you know, significant discount at the moment. Uh, when we announced the recent deal that we just did with Galaxy, we obviously saw an increase in our share price. So I think with us delivering what we've said is the financial start to come out and showing that increase in revenue as we layer in some new investments. And as also, you know, we're so tied to gold and silver, like we are only gold and silver royalty company. We have that direct gold credits and silver credits coming into Empress. So as we see that started to get reflected in our revenue of how tied we are, I think there'll be another lift and increase there as well. Listeners should take note uh, of the fact that the senior royalty and streaming companies frequently sell at one and a half to two times the uh, net asset value. It would, it would appear from the arithmetic that you've given us that you're selling for about half of net asset value with the ability from a very small base to materially increase net asset value. Uh, I realize that that's a sort of a soft leading question, but is there anything wrong with that thesis from what you've heard? No, I think that's exactly it. I think it's delivering, it's getting ourselves out there, people to understand who the, who the company is. Again, we're all structure financiers within the company. Um, and it's just, you know, repeating and, and finding more opportunities like this and delivering on the revenue. Assuming our attendees like the story, and I assure you many of them will, how do they learn more uh, about Empress? Who do they contact specifically? And how do they contact that person? Contact myself. It's my email address is alexandra at empressroyalty.com. Uh, my phone number is 604-218-5030. Um, between myself and Natasha, who's our new vice president, investor relations, we are available for calls before the conference or come to the conference and come to the booth and chat with us. We'll be available the whole time. Um, we obviously love what we're building here and would love to talk to anyone more about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the best possible answer. The CEO says the buck stops here. Talk to me. Thank you again. Thank you so much.